Imagine taking an entire Minecraft world and smushing it down into one block. That's this map where you can break this block infinitely, getting everything from stone or wood to diamonds or some guardians spawning on your face. Oh, this one I actually feel bad about. I'm going to journey through this infinitely compact world, building out an awesome base which you can download, and that starts right now. I started by breaking the first rule, breaking the only block in the world, but thankfully it regenerates, almost like that's the entire point of the map. Okay, okay, let's get started. I broke down the logs that were spawning in and the chest, getting a few of the things that I could use to expand out the platform, making a safe little three by three while I broke the blocks in the middle and got a friend. <gasps> friend! Okay, friend's gonna try to kill me if I'm not careful. Now this is what you get for being a patron. I'm gonna ask them to name him right now. So uh, I'll come back to that in voiceover. They get to find out right now what I'm doing. I continued breaking the blocks, getting whatever resources it was destined to give me until I got a bucket of water. And I thought, you know what? Let's do something a little bit different. I know that eventually gravity blocks will spawn and the whole idea is you're just supposed to put one under there. But if I moved the whole base down so that the one block block was floating, I honestly think that looks a little unique. This way we're looking straight at it. This feels a little bit more interesting, don't you think? But with a gift from the block god for sapling and some torches, I did feel like I was moving forward, and I had a little bit of an idea of where I wanted to go next. I planted that down, got my pig friend down to the main level of the base, and broke it, getting bedrock and counting down to our first biome proper. And our first biome is the plains. So I just started mining away at grass, clay, and dirt. I did get a second and piglin, as well as a cow and a few other general passive mobs, all of them staying very friendly. It's a nice little happy sky base with my friends. I don't want those friends to accidentally push me off to my death though, so I am focusing on expanding the platform outwards, getting some dirt down so that the animals could have a place to go, and getting that fenced in so that they wouldn't end up murdering each other by pushing them down into the void. Without any wheat or other things, I have to move the mobs just by bumping into them which was very nerve-wracking, and melons look like the main thing that I'm being given for food, aside from the food with legs, but we're not gonna go ahead and kill them just yet until we can breed some more. Look at that, first egg! First egg, and we get a baby! That feels like a good sign. You all, you keep, you are pre- No! Oh, they are so precarious right now! That? Might not have been a good idea. <laughs> that pig is holding on <laughs> by their toes. <laughs> tree! Tree! Okay, tree. Actually, let's do this quick first. Yes, okay. Profitable tree. With a non one block source of wood, we have some birch. And I understand it's birch, but it is the only wood that I'm actually getting to work with right here. I waterlogged some stairs to be able to set up a farm in the dirt patch proper, planting down all of the different seeds that I collected to get a more renewable food source. I'm also using that to expand out the fence so that my friends don't end up killing each other, as I spent the remainder of the day as the sun set just mining at the block until I saw bedrock in our next transition. Upgrade, okay. That will prevent the sheep from eating it and that can start spreading. Yes! Stone! <laughs> now we were underground, which meant I was switching from a shovel to a pickaxe, and torches felt like they were gonna be a little bit more important as I was seeing the odd block of coal pop up. I upgraded all of my tools to stone, saw some iron in the blocks as well, and felt like I was really making progress. That really threw me off because it's before raw iron. I forgot I was in 1.16. Versions of the game aside and getting block drops, I threw down some torches so that the platform would feel a little bit safer or at least just brighter for you all to see. Getting a mushroom, which isn't exactly an underground mob, but I'm not really willing to question it at this point. I kept strip mining my way through the singular block in the world that is actually worth mining and had some zombie friends pop up with leather caps 
I think they were prepared in case this didn't happen to happen at night. With Monsters Hunted now in my pocket, I was mining my way through, getting a little bit of iron, and then a chest with spruce saplings. Finally, an actually decent wood type being delivered to me. I used a little bit of coal that I had to light up the area surrounding the pig pen, and using the one grass block that I had collected, I'm just trying to wait for it to carry its way over so that that space will actually be grass covered instead. Oh no! Friend, get, get, get in the hole. Get in the pen. Oh, two survived. <laughs> That went so wrong so quickly. With the rabbits unaliving themselves behind me, at least I wasn't responsible for that one, and you cannot blame me, I did find another chest with some mushrooms, some more spruce saplings, and starting to indicate that I was making my way out of the underground, starting to make a little bit more progress. I'm just crafting up low tier pickaxes right now. I don't want to invest the iron that I've been given into a pickaxe or an axe right now, because I figure I have thousands of blocks ahead of me. But it might have been daytime, the jump scare we're just getting started. Oh no. <sighs> that was terrifying. Genuinely, genuinely terrifying. Do not give me that jump scare block. That is not okay. But at this point, I had run out of melons and harsh decisions needed to be made. With a little bit of steak in my stomach so that I was good to go, I killed some spiders and creepers that were spawning from the one block, working my way up towards wool. I don't want to shear the sheep until there's grass so that they could potentially regrow. But as the sun set and I made my way through a final gravel patch, I made my way back up to the surface, being given a map where I could get a picture of the world as it exists today. Hey, we're about to exit the caves. Progress. We're making progress. But before I moved into the next biome, I wanted to expand out the platform a little bit. So I spent some time chopping down all of the trees that I had using some stripped logs and some cobblestone to make the platform just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. And after a little bit of shoveling of the one block, I realized what time it was IRL. And it is at this moment where it's 1.30 in the morning, real life, so it's time for sleep. The next biome was desperately asking me to let it go, let it go, with all sorts of different snow variants. Now, this is before powdered snow, so we weren't gonna be able to get that, and we're working with a slightly less expansive overall mountain biome. There's ice, coal, but gold was actually a pretty nice find, although it did require me to upgrade to an iron pickaxe to be able to mine that successfully. When the first wolf spawned, I thought for a second, Oh look, friend! And then I remembered, oh no, they're gonna try to eat all of my other mobs and I don't have any bones. So I made a quick boat and threw the wolf into that for right now. I do not want to push them into the void, but I want to wait until I can teach them not to attack everything else that's on my platform before I go ahead and let them free. Thankfully, I didn't have to wait long for bones to potentially spawn as a few strays were dropped onto my head and them getting into a bow fight with each other relatively quickly. One of them actually dropped dropped a carrot, which I was able to plant into the farm, getting another crop accessible to me, and harvesting all of these spruce trees to just have the supplies to expand the platform at some point in the future. More strays attacked through the day, but I didn't get to kill them. I only really pushed them off into the void. And then a wolf spawned, which seemed exciting until I realized it could jump the fence and attack my chickens. No, 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 get back here. Get back here. You're so fast! <laughs> so they just, they came in, they killed several of my chickens and rabbits, and then left. What a menace. With that little bit of a setback, I did focus on moving some of my initial storage away from directly next to the one block to some chests that were away and on one of the railings. This way, I'd have a little bit more space to potentially engage on anything that popped in, including the two foxes who popped up just a few seconds later and got a loving tap down into oblivion. Mining this one block, while important, is visually uninteresting, so I continued along until I found a polar bear who had spawned, thankfully passive and friendly towards me right now because they would maul me to death in an instant. I tried putting them into a boat, but 
bears don't go in boats. And when the next fox spawned, I heard some aggressive sounds out of the bear and panicked and pushed them down into the void. A little while later, the block gave me another wolf who I pushed into the boat just to be able to have two wolf friends once I can tame them and again, make them non-aggressive to the rest of my mobs. But it was shortly after that that my first monster party spawned. And this was something that I was not 100% prepared for. There was mobs with iron swords. The strays were probably the biggest danger, but I was able to push those off of the edge, making my way around and axe killing all of the zombies, safely escaping my first real threat in this world. I continued mining through, pushing strays off the end and not being able to collect any bones until I had trapped one in a boat, them dropping nothing. The foxes though were the real menace as they were able to hop the fence and attack my animals and I was fully out of rabbits now. Oh no. All right, floppers, you're the survivor. <laughs> I did a bit more mining and then crafted up a set of shears, which allowed me to get some wool blocks from the sheep, making a bed, which would let me sleep into the morning. It doesn't really change the overall progression, but it is nice to be able to get a little bit of rest and not have to worry about phantoms. Another wolf spawned, so I used the three bones that I had collected from these strays thus far taming them and making a best friend forever. With a bit more work on the one block continuing to power my way through the Arctic Tundra, I crafted up a lot of the snowballs into snow blocks, which I could use to theoretically expand the platform at one point in the future, or if I can get a pumpkin, make a snowman for infinite blocks. But just like that, the frozen tundra was done. Benevolent gifts, lots of bones. Hey, there we go. There has to be people who have remembered the entire block pattern, right? That they can break it with the optimal efficiency. Show me the speedrunner. Somebody's done it. But this is going along nicely. Let's see if we can make friends. Yes. Yes. Two for two. Perfect. You all chill right there. You're doing your job. Wonderful. Now we see where this is going to take us next. The oceans. Oh boy, okay. I'm just thinking about what mobs exist in the ocean, and my first thought is, we need to make this platform a little bigger. I got started right away, focusing first on expanding the platform outwards, mirroring what I had done on the other two sides already, to create a little bit more of a symmetrical section. Then, I worked on setting up that it would be a bit more of a circle, because circles in Minecraft, we all love circles in Minecraft, setting up some stairs after the initial entry circle to be able to create a larger, higher platform up a little bit further out. This was a lot of chopping of wood, and I really only have the basic skeleton and framework of it set up, but we're getting places. I used the andesite that I had collected to get a little bit of a nice interior retaining wall for the overall space, harvesting all of the crops to be able to get food, and I thought, why don't I build a little gazebo surrounding the block itself? Since the block provides, we'll make this look nice at least. And now let past me give you a bit of a tour. I realized how expensive this was when I was about halfway through and thought, well, I, I can't change it now. It's too <laughs> it's too late to change it now. But in short, we have a little storage area of which we will build an additional four along the sides. We're going to have to move our animals up out of this pen into a safer space. I have a plan for them and how we're going to do that. We have our garden area where we're going to, for right now, keep crops. I'm trying to get grass to come over here so that part can be green. And eventually, we will get rid of these crops and move them like up here somewhere. And then that can be green as well. But we have some basic trees and some birch growing over there. We have storage. I'm actually organized. Y'all would probably be so happy with me right now, but blocks are expensive and we haven't done any mining in a while. So the last thing I'm gonna do is put a fence around this place and then we're gonna get back to the one block. I also kind of want to try something silly. That would have been so cool if that actually worked. I wonder if we turned that into a slab, that would work. This might auto break sand for us. Yes! 
That went so well. But the theme for this biome is oceans, meaning we're gonna get a decent bit of sand, allowing me to speed run my way through a good portion of this biome. I got my first diamond, which was a massive bit of celebration. Only two more before I can make something useful. Using the leather to set up item frames to label the different bases. I'm working my way through Prismarine and the cobble and the ores and letting the sand just fall. I got a trident from the chest, which I am definitely not throwing until I have some walls to surrounding this place, seeing some fish spawn and not really being able to do anything about them, and the spiky fish spawning and just kind of watching them yeet themselves off into oblivion. Overall, this biome is quite interesting considering being in the sky so much makes the aquatic mobs just very, very out of place. We're just gonna not look at the fish. We will not make eye contact. We will not feel guilty. Hello there. Oh no. <laughs> well, that problem sorted itself out pretty quickly. Oh, this one I actually feel bad about. Because they make noise. I don't have water. Friends, there's nothing I can do for you. I'm... So sorry, there's nothing I can do. I don't have water. But don't worry, Karma would come back for me very quickly for ignoring that fish in need. Beware. Um... Oh. That would hurt so bad. This is gonna hurt so bad. Okay. You I need to kill quick. The elder fell off? I think the elder fell off again. Ow. Goodbye! <laughs> Goodbye. Whew, problem solved. With the monster party dealt with, I would expand the upper platform whenever the trees had grown, spending the rest of my time just mining on the block. It started raining, which looked kind of weird being just floating in the void with rain, but here you go. But that would come in very handy. Yes, we can get another block of water. Infinite water, we only need two. Fill up, my friends. You can do it. While the rain continued to go, I continued mining at the one block, getting another Elder Guardian and having them fall off into the void, and another Trident Drowned, who I'm just playing with the edges and the angles here to be able to ax them down while just trying to not die. I was extremely unlucky with the water levels in the cauldron so far, so crossing our fingers, I hope, as I worked my way through the remainder of the blocks in this biome, fighting the final Elder Guardian, using a little bit of milk from one of my sheep to deal with the mining fatigue, and crafting my way into the next biome and getting a bit of an ominous disc from the musical chest this does not seem very musical this seems like a horror movie but a few blocks later I cracked into the bedrock and it was ready for me to move into my next biome upgrade and Honestly, something I was even more excited about, I'd received two buckets of fish, which meant I had two buckets of water, which meant I had infinite buckets of water. Where are we going to next? What will it be? Who knows? Find out in two, one. The jungle dungeon. Prepare for jungle wood and lots of cobblestone and probably bamboo. That would be nice. But before I get started on the transition into the jungle biome itself, I wanted to put all of the blocks that I had gained into use to doing yet another expansion of the overall base, using some dark prismarine to complete the ceiling of the pagoda surrounding the one block. I'm continuing with the outer circle of the birch, just trying to make sure that that would look nice. I'm planting birch trees and other things up on single dirt blocks on the upper platform because I don't have a better place to grow them right now. And for a little bit of texture and to mix things up, I'm placing the coral block which will become dead and match in the nice gray color in and with the polished andesite for the interior retaining wall. My main food source at this point has converted into mushroom soup as I can just craft a couple bowls and eat from the infinite soup vending machines that are mushrooms when I was out of blocks and waiting for trees to grow. So it's time to start harvesting again. A few parrots spawned in one of the blocks and I was able to throw them enough seeds and have subwoofers on each shoulder. They would constantly replicate my mob sounds, which would, it's nice to have a little bit more activity here. What's not nice? The Vex that spawned. Absolutely little demons. And I realize that they are actually little demons because they can phase through blocks, which is 
a huge problem. I did get a few jungle trees and some cocoa beans, which I planted down for an immediate farm and getting some coral fans from a variety chest. Can't really use right now. I don't really have water for them, but progress is progress. <gasps> Panda. Okay. Well, now it's really time to, you know, get the whole animal thing figured out because I want a panda. The main problem was this panda was a bit too chunky to go through just a singular gate, so I had to demolish a good portion of the fence to allow them to work their way through, and then had to deal with some witches that spawned in with the lowered fence being a little bit more of a problem. Okay, you are a problem. You are a problem. Sneak in. One, two. Oh, okay. Problem solves. <laughs> that could have gone so badly. Considering I'm getting far more when it comes to the overall friends that we have on this island, we need to make a lot more space for them. So I spent some time chopping down the large spruce trees that I had collected throughout time, getting all of that into resources that I can use to expand out the base a little bit further. This would allow me to complete all four quadrants of the lower area and the retaining wall with the birch on top to form a overall larger circle. I then thought I have a whole bunch of dirt, so let's Let's expand the dirt out underneath the birch to create an interior living space for the animals themselves and have them behind a fence so that they're not interacting with the one block or getting in the way in case any hostile mobs happen to spawn. The only problem was I have very limited resources, so I wasn't able to actually fully complete this segment. So I made a smaller fenced in segment where I was able to move all the mobs into and would just slowly work on expanding the dirt platform surrounding the exterior of the base as more things would spawn. I did throw the pandas out of the way as they were refusing to follow me as pandas refused to do and then kept mining my way through the jungle the mossy trees and the occasional jungle log will actually help with texturing here so i'm very excited to get all of those more detail blocks is always a positive thing the vex can just go right away. I don't want to deal with them, but I was inherently forced to. I did pick up my third diamond, which was absolutely massive, allowing me to make a diamond pickaxe. And here's where things start to move a little faster. Monster party. Oh my goodness. That, no. That is so bad. The vexes, get rid of the vexes. Get off the edge, okay. They're off the edge. Ow. Ow. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. This is not good. Poison plus vexes. Yep, there it is. Oh, that's the first death. Okay. Recovery kit. I don't need no recovery kit. I just need to kill these things. Okay, diamond pickaxe is safe. Let's just get that into a chest. I do not care which one it is right now. Oh. Okay. And now you know why it's not hardcore, because I knew that kind of stuff was coming. With the monster party complete and my first death officially on the books, look, I didn't say this one was hardcore in the title. I did take on the witch that was guarding the next diamond ore and a chest which had some, thankfully, a little bit cheerier music hidden within. But the overgrown chest brought with me sugarcane and lapis, two major things to be able to progress towards enchanting. That would come in very handy. So I focused on getting a little bit of water hidden underneath one of the columns so that I could plant some sugar cane to be able to get that to grow. I then thought, why don't I take the fish and actually give them something to live in? So I made a little bit of a tiny pond in one of the four quadrants while I continued working on digging through on the main one block, getting some more sugar cane and some bone meal, which would once again move me a lot faster. But as I completed this biome, earning a benevolent chest, it was time for the next step. Oh, okay, couple diamonds, bamboo, oh, bamboo. Unironically, that is huge. We can have that growing up. Yes, done with the jungle. We've made massive progress. We have a lot of building to do, but it's coming along nicely. What will be our next biome? 
<laughs> oh my goodness! That was so efficient. Oh, I'm gonna have fun with this. The next biome was a red desert, but I wanted to do a bit more work, so I completed the dirt circles surrounding the exterior of the base underneath the birch, so that as I get more dirt and supplies for that, I could build that out. The mesa quickly provided me with a pair of llamas, which I tried very hard to get into the animal pen and then gave up as they very much did not want to go there. There's a decent bit of gold in this biome, as well as a few odd diamond ore, which I'm using to get myself further set up, but the foxes they they had to go shortly after killing that predator on, on the rest of my animals we had something different spawn oh yo oh okay so they're gonna become something I don't want that to happen actually <laughs> Henry Henry is a leather worker so it's the cauldron I break that Henry should take no jobs. You chill there, my friends. I placed down a few blocks of sand with the cactus on top of them. This would allow me to get green dye. But shortly after that, we got our first monster spawn with husks and then some pillagers who might have been missing the point. Oh, hey, buddy. Wait. Oh, they can't attack because they don't have any weapons. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we can do something fun with that. Don't trample my crops. Get in the boat. <laughs> Move. <laughs> you too chill there. Considering the amount of wood that I was finding in this biome, I took my next three diamonds and made a diamond axe, which would allow me to chop through things a little bit quicker and be a bit more efficient overall, finding a wandering trader who had spawned. And there were some decent trades here. However, unfortunately, I had really no source at any emeralds, so they were unfortunately not gonna be able to help too much. I did buy the Nautilus shell just because I thought maybe if that got me towards conduit, that would be awesome. But other than that, yeah, we struck out. I spent a while mining at the one block until donkeys had spawned. And yes, that sand is really coming in so handy. Getting a vindicator who popped up who would be aggressive even though they weren't holding a weapon. So they had to go. And I found a second villager friend who would theoretically allow me to make infinite villagers and a full breeding and trading system if I so wanted to do so. The monster party was a good old fashioned OG raid, combining some pillagers with some zombies with iron swords and armor. Unfortunately for them, the fence that I had put around the area surrounding the one block spawn platform meant that they were trapped inside and I was more than capable to just ax kill them from the exterior. A little bit of preparation goes a very long way. I found a third villager getting them into the boats as well, finding another wandering trader a little bit later, but they had even fewer trades that were potentially useful. PETA, don't watch this video. As we got to what felt like the tail end of this biome, I'm starting to see some random blocks from all around all of the biomes that we had accumulated through at this point. I'm starting to think there must be some sort of buffer area near the tail end of each biome just to re-up you on all of the resources you potentially have spent so far. Benevolent gift. I think this is the last block. Called it. Look at that. Probably time to focus on another expansion. Completing the top ring would be a good idea, but also completing the back of the bottom ring would be good as well. This is going to be Gigabrain. But first, let's see where we are going next. And our next adventure is... The Nether. Oh, this is gonna be fun. First thing is I need a lot more dirt for the exterior area, and thankfully you can craft Dirt. By converting the dirt into coarse dirt, you can basically take all your gravel and make it into dirt as well. It just takes a few steps of hoeing the ground and then shoveling it up, but overall it's honestly doable. I did that for a good portion of the day and harvested birch trees throughout the night, finishing out that platform and making sure I got that all set up, setting up all of the dirt underneath and making sure to put down torches so that I wouldn't have mobs spawning down here. The mossy cobblestone helped in figuring out the back area of this wall so it had a little bit more texture and I can make the blocks stretch a little bit further because we are running low. But after about two days worth of work, but while working on the upper bit and getting the circle finished or nearly finished, I got attacked by a few zombies. I genuinely don't know where they spawned from. That kind of came out of nowhere. But with another day's worth of work, the birch circle was complete. 
Alright, enough dilly-dallying. We have three quarters of a circle. <laughs> Let's get mining in the nether. Now the nether rack itself would instamine if I had even just a single level of efficiency here, or it might require efficiency too actually. But it's going very quick. The piglins that spawned, I am very glad I have a fence here though, because they would obliterate me in next to no armor. I'd be dead in two hits, and we all know how that goes. Funny enough though, they zombified, so a little bit easier to take out. I was throwing down the more chests that I had Collected, finding my first piece of ancient debris actually which I did not realize that that was in this pack obsidian would also occasionally come up which just really brought progress to a grinding halt The next bit of mobs was some magma cubes which were easy enough to take care of and then more obsidian <laughs> just this just takes so long to break every time it comes up. With some gilded blackstone came some hoglands, which gave me some pork chops, honestly, and some leather opportunities, which was nice. But as I kept mining, I realized I had made a pretty big tactical error with my base. Oh, oh, oh. Ow. Oh wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. My platform is mean, m mostly a fire. Oh, dog, 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 dog. Wolf, wolf. Oh, that was almost really bad. <laughs> Everything is made out of wood. This could all go in a second. Okay, we need to be, we need to, yeah. <laughs> what burned? This one fence? <gasps> Blaze rods, yes. Honestly, pretty awesome. As one of the half of what we need. I also think we can now safely do this. Let's keep a bucket <laughs> in our inventory from now on. Okay, lesson learned. Uh, flammable. This platform is flammable. And I did technically take it to the nether, so I really should have seen that through. I did a little bit of work to repair all of the damage, getting mostly fixed. There were some gaps here and there that I'll cover as soon as I get some more spruce wood. I found a strider who just decided to chill, like really chill inside that circle. It's getting a little bit more crowded inside of that fence, actually. Actually. Breaking at the one block until some wither skeleton spawn, followed shortly by a chest with a bucket of lava, which unfortunately isn't farmable because there's no dripstone. And then I'm just gonna let this next bit play out uninterrupted. <laughs> oh, that was very loud. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> we got another gas tier from that. And an epic level advancement, okay. <laughs> Turns out the nether's dangerous even when it's only one block of the nether, as these mobs spawning in were definitely causing some damage to my platform I had not originally calculated for. I continued mining at the block, getting a second strider and three more pieces of ancient debris, which would allow me to upgrade my pick or a piece of armor to netherite, but I'm gonna hold on to that for right now. I wanna wait and potentially get something that would be enchanted or at least repaired. I spent a bit more time mining at the blocks to repair more damage that I had noticed, finding more hoglins who popped up and just got a little ax to the face as I worked my way through the remainder of the nether structure. The monster party though, <laughs> oh boy, was that something to deal with. Multiple piglins in full suits of armor with swords that all zombified, so as soon as I attacked one of them, they are all just marching straight at me. Thankfully though, they don't know how to open a gate so we're doing pretty Gucci. It's the blazes that are the biggest problem, less so for setting me on fire, more so for burning away the entire base if I'm not careful. But once the fire started to catch and grow and expand, I had two problems. One, most of my base was burning down and completely vanishing, and two, the fence had been made open. So any more hostile mobs that were gonna spawn were gonna be able to come and eat my face. Oh man, that was a mess. All right, we have some repairing to do. 
Oh my goodness. First priority here was repairs. I had a good portion of the materials available and while it might be a little mismatched or a little incomplete or imperfect, I was able to at least complete or recomplete the central area to make sure that that would be safe. That was until another blaze spawned and got way too high, way too quickly. Before I was able to take it down, it burned another hole in my floor really need to think this through. I spent some time taking care of all of the animals, realizing that one of my cows had inadvertently eaten a blaze fireball and had been cooked to death. Harvesting more nether, quickly taking care of the next gas that spawned, and getting a benevolent chest to complete this dimension in the world. And I'd be very happy if the next one contained significantly less fire. That was genuinely the worst one we've had to deal with yet. The fact that they can just burn away my platform is kind of devastating. Where do we go next? Idyll, a breeze of peace flows across the land. Is a quartz biome? What the heck? Before I would get started on the next biome though, I had quite a bit I needed to do around the base. Firstly, I made an enchanting table and started working my way up towards a level 30 enchanting setup. That was gonna take some time, clearly, but it's something that we can get towards that would make me a little bit safer considering all of the mobs that keep spawning. I also went into the grass ring to set up a bit of a carrot farm here so I could set up some more additional food sources. Bread would help me breed the cows where I was able to thankfully find a few more from another lucky block. And then I got to work on the one block, and this dimension is weird. It's idle, which has a little bit of everything so far. I can't really figure out a theme. That was until the bees attacked. Angry bees, angry bees, angry bees, no. No, oh, why you do this? That's so horrible. Regeneration, flame, but why did it give me this? A few cats spawned in shortly after that and I was thankfully able to feed them from some fish that I found from a random location. Working my way through and getting the gold for a piece of netherite scrap which would allow me to enchant my netherite pickaxe. Now a lot of the lower tier blocks would break a lot quicker. The idle dimension seems to be a bit of a mixed bag. I really can't place it and if anybody knows what this is supposed to represent, please let me know down in the comments. But the first monster party brought something that I was genuinely really hoping not to see in this world. Oh, the worst thing ever. Worst thing ever. The worst thing ever. The worst thing ever. All right, get over here. This is just a bit of everything. It's a mess. Fight me. Oh, it's the cats. It's all the ocelots. It keeps scaring them away. Well, okay. Cool. As the next run continued, it spawned a zombie horse, which honestly is something pretty unique. You can't get this in Vanilla Survival, so it's unique to have one of this, considering you'll never see it on my channel. More phantoms spawned, who I was able to bow down, and I thought I should really start getting some emeralds that I could theoretically buy some bookcases from a librarian so I could get myself up to level 30 enchants. So I boated a villager off towards a fletching table and waited for them to be able to take on a job. I spent the better portion of a full Minecraft today mining at the block, getting another swarm of bees who were the main antagonists of this dimension apparently, and a little bit of baby slimes. Nothing nearly as dangerous as what we had just encountered in the nether, and this felt like it was going to be a bit of a respite overall. I set up Henry the villager with a fletching table and traded for both sticks and arrows. This would allow me to take on the phantoms that were spawning that I would have to deal with now, as well as start generating some income from logs that I could process through. And generally, the rest of this dimension was somewhat uneventful. I mined my way through extensively and for a very long time, getting to the bedrock quite quickly. Here we go. Name tag, a cake. And there we go, another biome down. The next biome was the desolate lands, but we had more building to do, as the transition from biome to biome seems to be when I put the most of my attention into the base itself. I focused on completing the lower circle, getting that set up so the mobs could be released and wandering a little bit further. I'm not gonna lie though, the main reason that I did this is that they'd have a wall between them and whatever hostile mobs were spawning, so I wouldn't lose more to just casual crossfire. So yeah, it turns out 
up, it's the desolate land, but it's also probably a stronghold given the silverfish that we're spawning in. And I actually ended up with some spawn eggs in the next chest, which feel like cheating, I'm not gonna lie. I don't normally ever get to see these. Some cave spiders were the next thing to attack me. They can actually clear the fence. So it's a bit of a threat that I need to be a little bit more careful for. But just as I'm thinking that I'm pretty safe, the game was ready to jump scare me again. Oh, jeez. Oh, 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 oh. Also, that one got out. Oh, no, 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 no. No, where's my stuff? No, don't tell me my stuff fell over the edge. That's so bad. No, my hoe! My hoe, oh no, my hoe's right here. Yay, I've saved my hoe. Now I know what you're thinking. I'm the hardcore guy. I'm the guy who just doesn't die in forever and I've died twice in this video. And the whole reason I wanted to make this was to make something that could be a little bit more laid back. I really like just being able to make a video and tell a story with you all, build something cool. So I hope you'll give me the indulgence on this one that I didn't do it in hardcore. Maybe that means we have to do it again sometime. That could be fun. But you know that constant looming threat of death I was worried about? Yeah, here they come. Oh no, oh no. I was able to beat down one of the evokers before they spawn Vex, getting a totem, throwing that in my offhand, having it immediately popped by another one of the Vex, who I was able to just bow down and then take care of their master. That was the closest I've come to death. But now I have a totem in my hand, so I'm a little bit safer in case another big swarm of dangerous mobs comes through. The next monster party was skeletons, and I have enough wolves and it's open enough, so I just opened the gate and let them in to do their work. Shortly following that was a single evoker though which was easier to take out not before they spawn vex of course because there can only be one totem in this world apparently but close enough that i only ended up spending the one to get one back the silverfish took out a lot of the cobblestone platform actually infesting the stone so i broke out all of the cobblestone replacing it with stone brick i know they can infest that too but i figured it was time for a glow up the enchanted book in the chests gave me channeling, which was such an awesome find. But the monster party that would spawn would cost me greatly. No, dogs, no! No! They tried to save me and they jumped. Oh no, I'm a horrible. Oh no, I've killed my parrot. I'm out of, oh, I'm out of arrows. Even though that Vex had two of my dogs jump into the void, it wasn't done taking for me, breaking my totem after I had run out of arrows. I was running to the villager to try to refresh and well, dead again. How unceremonious, honestly. Well, that was horrible. That was so horrible. I already feel punished. Oh, come on, I just got over this. Thankfully, these skeleton horses are a lot easier to deal with as they can't really be as mobile being trapped in the center. And that fence is just continuing to pay off time and time again. A few evokers spawned shortly after that and I was able to earn one totem, pop it, and then earn another relatively quickly. These are not lasting nearly as long as they do in my hardcore worlds. Did a bit of time to care for the animals, breeding more, getting some poison spiders which spawned to attack me, but overall, I had made good progress, and it was time for the next upgrade. Ooh, okay, that's not bad. Oh, I am not gonna lie, that was perhaps the worst biome we've encountered yet. We lost what, three wolves? Three wolves, a cow, a villager, multiple totems, we died once? What is going on? When did this map suddenly get so freaking difficult? All right, let's see what next kind of chaos and shenaniganery is about to happen. Oh, now it's gonna get interesting. And as we go into the end, I'm gonna do a deep pull that wasn't so deep when I actually recorded this back in May. If you watched the Red Creator Cup, you know I like using boats 
to break things. So, uh... <laughs> Let's do that again. Yeah, this video has been sitting on the shelf for a little while because we've had other things going on and other things that we've been wanting to do. So think of it as a blast from the past as I start digging my way through the end. The first thing that spawned was actually Ender Mites, not Ender Men. So that was relatively easy to deal with. And we did start getting some random assortments of things that definitely aren't end blocks, but are the one block giving us a little bit of a blessing of other biomes so we can make sure that we're fully equipped and prepared. I think they're intending that you don't need to trade with the villagers to do this so we're probably going to end up with most of the resources that we need when the first endermen spawned they refused to get in the boats right by the block and i had to capture them out on the outer ring and ask them a question to get myself what i needed obsidian was still pretty badly just bringing progress to a halt and after the next chest a whole swarm of endermites spawned but the fence really did their best at disabling them. As I continued breaking blocks at one point in time, mobs spawned and I started hearing more mob sound effects and I had no idea where they were actually coming from. I walked around the base for a while but decided to go to sleep thinking that might draw them out, but nope, nothing. I continued mining along, going through what was very clearly an end city in single block form, taking down all the endermen, getting a whole bunch of pearls, which would be awesome because I was absolutely striking out on the pearls from the endermen themselves. So this would let me potentially be set up for a portal at some point in the future. The next chest gave me some acacia wood, lapis, and a heart of the sea. Not really an end material, but okay. It's just rolling on something random. The one after that gave me some fire protection, a whole bunch of gold, and some nice, useful potions. The monster party was honestly the biggest mix up here with a bunch of endermites and endermen who could teleport out. That's the real danger here. But a few shulkers additionally, which was a really cool addition. Once all of the endermen were trapped in boats or bopped off of the edge of the world, it was relatively easy to manage all of them. I did mine the block underneath this one underman here just utterly no! bullying them but with that cleared i got another chest with my very first eye of ender and it's making me think we really are approaching the end game of this world shortly after that and a few additional enderman murders a second chest spawned and a shulker hidden behind me that i had not noticed and was just chilling oh hello Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I'm floating! <laughs> I'm gonna have to MLG this, or else I'm gonna die. This is gonna be bad. Oh, we hit these! I actually noticed a second shulker up on top of the pagoda. I have no idea how it made its way up there. Oh, there's another eye in there. Yo! That's four eyes! That's two. We have enough. Alright, we have enough eyes. We just need to make it to the end. Or I guess, make an end portal? I don't know how this works. But as I continued mining along, I was worried that my netherite pick, the thing that I had made from my first three diamonds, might not complete this adventure with me. It's only 200 durability left. I don't think I'm gonna make it. The netherite pick is not gonna survive. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Never mind. There's just a portal there. There's the shulker. Hello, buddy. How you doing? Yo, we could just... We can finish this thing. So what is the last section if the portal is there? Three, two, one. <laughs> the after phase. The infinite block pulsates with strange energy. Oh! But I wasn't about to just go rushing into the end. This isn't a speed run. This is a full adventure through and making something that you can all continue to enjoy. If you go support on Patreon, you can get the world download. I spent some more time crafting up additional dirt that I could use to finish the outer nature ring inside using the cobblestone and the dead coral blocks, the mossy cobble to get that exterior wall so that things would look nice and it would allow for a space where the animals could roam freely around the outside. And the interior space is basically my working area. 
area. I was mixing that up, dropping down the fences once the mobs had safety and wouldn't yeet themselves off into oblivion. But then I realized I should probably put a railing around the top thing so Minecraft Osho wouldn't come and try to kill me. So I set up the blackstone as walls with some quartz blocks to just get a really strong color accent to the rest of the base, which was all warmer and natural tones. And it felt like it would be something kind of interesting. I put some shroom lights down as the actual light sources with acacia surrounding that, trying to use a bit of everything that I acquired from this one malevolent block to potentially make something really unique. We had another wandering trader pop up at one point in time, actually. And they were selling some saplings and dyes, really nothing that was extremely interesting, but I did feel like I had to do my friend Mongo a solid and leave this one be. I threw down some trap doors for the interior railings and set up some actually official places to grow trees on the upper ring. Having to deal with the pig definitely not wanting me to go to the end and replacing some of this end stone with stone bricks, so it did look a little bit more like a stronghold itself. I also wanted to be able to get down underneath the platform thinking that I'm going to have to cover the portal with glass or something and be able to enter the portal from underneath considering where I had put my one block and that that was a little bit higher than I thought. While I was underground, I did see a shulker who was just chilling underneath my island for who knows how long at this point. They did try to give me a little bit of trouble. I have no idea where they warped away to, but I was able to set up a lower area on the base with some sandstone and red sandstone and the portal itself open so that I could be able to jump up into it, setting up some trap doors with some ladders on it. So I'd be able to move from this level down to the next. And with that, the building was complete, but there was still one or two more things left to do. I crafted up some final gear, did some very basic low level enchants, and I was ready to go. All right, now, now I'm properly equipped. Now, let's kill a dragon. Alright. You can't see it, but this is a portal. <laughs> see? It's a portal. Let's do this. Oh, I didn't bring blocks. As I dug my way up into the surface and headed up onto the end island, the starry night sky above me, the aurora around me, I knew what I had to do. Shooting the crystals, breaking the cages, taking down the dragon with some occasional pot shots, and using my diamond axe in the center, stabbing her in the throat to be able to dominate this dimension. I did watch her throw Enderman left and right as she flew around, trying very carefully not to be one of those victims, as I was nowhere near prepared for the fall as I am normally when I take this fight on. But with a sturdy bow, albeit a bit less enchanted, and an axe in my hand, I was able to claim victory. But just as victory was about to be at hand, there had to be one last shakeup. Not great! Oh, 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 I'm still alive! Let's make it good. Come on, dragon. I'm just gonna wait. And the second you move, you're dead. The second you move, you're dead. Yes! We did it! All the levels. Let's go! You love to see it. Thank you for watching!